Hello and good morning, good afternoon and good evening to you, the good people of the tube. Hope you're all today. Hope you are feeling grand and all is well in your world. Hello there. Uh, today's video, everybody, is a different one. Um, well, not really different, but it's something I've been meaning to get around to for a while. And it's called Unlocking the Neck. Uh, and basically what, what, what today's video is basically going to be about is just basically giving you the ability to kind of navigate up and down the neck through different scales mainly the five positions of the pentatonic scale which are a must know for any guitarist in the world um the five positions of pentatonic scale are literally everything i i, I personally feel uh, they're pretty much everything you like you know you need to know when playing guitar pentatonic scales are the bread and butter of playing lead guitar blues in any style uh, apart from jazz which uh, is a bit more involved but if you're playing rock blues uh, reggae funk uh, whatever you know pentatonic scales are your they're, they're the ones you want to be going to and using so today's video called unlocking the neck is basically hopefully i'm going to show you all five minor pen, uh, uh, i'm going to show you five positions of the pentatonic scale in e minor because we all know how how guitarists love the key of E minor. Love E minor. Anyway, but yeah, I'm going to show you in E minor. So basically, we'll start off with um, a position up here of E minor, pe minor pentatonic, going into G major, and then so on and so forth, until we get back to E minor here, and then we'll go all the way up uh, to the last fret. Um, and then what I'm going to do is basically, well, as we go, I'm going to show you other notes you can add into the pentatonic scales so you, to... Um, just to give you more note options, if you know what I mean. So, for instance, like, you know, if it's just a minor, E minor, pentatonic scale, I'll show you the, the, the flat five, which is the blue note, and also the, uh, the the G major scale at the bottom of the E minor pentatonic scale, and the notes you can use out of that, just to add certain you know, different notes in to uh, pentatonic playing, just to make it a little bit more interesting. So... I'm not I'm I'm not 100 percent clued up on the theory of this thing. I just know it works. It's how I play, basically. This is everything I'm going to show you today. Is, is is that that's how I play. That's how I see the guitar neck. That's the shapes I use all the time. I never deviate because that's it. It, it does what I want it to do. So uh, basically, I'm letting you into my my head today, basically. And at the end of the video, I will show you this little diagram I've doodled out, which yeah, you can kind of see. Uh, and I'll just explain that as well. But without further ado, let's get into it. So, like I say, it's all going to be E minor today, and I'm going to show you at the end of the video, well, not the end of the video, but after we've done it, how to move it into different keys. If you use the minor pentatonic as your bass, I'm going to show you how to move it through different keys. So basically, when you know all your shapes in E minor, you can navigate through them in any key, as long as you know the key, of course. There has been times in the past where I've been to haven't been told a key and you have to figure it out on the spot. But I'll talk about that and I'll also talk about major, um, relative major and relative minor as well because that's important, especially when uh, soloing. So without further ado, let's get the camera closer, come closer and let's get into uh, unlocking the neck. Okay, okay. so uh, let's get into unlocking the guitar neck in E minor, everybody. Let me just move that screen up. So, oh, it's tilted. Give me one second, everybody. There we go. Ha ha. Now I can see you. Yes, that is okay. Okay, so E minor. Very, 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 very heavily used key in a lot of different styles. Blues, rock, you name it. So let's start with E minor pentatonic scale. And I do know that some people out there will already know their five positions of pentatonic scale. That's cool. Uh, you know, this is for kind of people who don't know these and kind of want to learn them, so to say. So um, and now I'll get into using the extra notes later on for people who might, you know, uh, who want to kind of you know, go a bit further than the five positions. Okay, so E minor pentatonic scale starts in its first position up here. So you got your open E string, then you got your third fret on the low E, open A, second fret A, open D, second fret D, open G string, second fret G string. Uh, open B string, third fret B string, open high E string, and third fret high E string. So the whole thing is. So 
So I'll do it one more time, really, really, really slow with one finger. Okay, so that's E minor pentatonic scale. Okay, so that, that that's your bread and butter of, of blues, rock, um, reggae, um, uh, funk kind of guitar playing. Yeah, that that's the that's the kind of like the main scale. You you're always gonna kind of come back to when you're playing uh, lead. You know, and, and you know, um, it's a nice starting point. It's really every note in there sounds good over kind of progressions as long as you get it in the right key it sounds terrible if you don't so don't do that um but yeah we'll talk about that a bit more in a bit but that minor pentatonic scale is is the actual kind of like yeah that's the bread the major is the butter so to say so that's an interesting way of saying it but anyway <coughs> okay so other notes you can add into the minor pentatonic scale are your flat five so it'll be your first fret on the a string <coughs> Which will give this sound. It's purple haze. So that's one of the notes you can add is the flat five. It's the blue note. But you've got to be really careful where you add it. Because it can really be horrific. So that note there, the flat five, be aware. It's cool, but just be aware of it. Because it can sound nasty and horrible. You can also add it on the G string on the third fret. There. And that's just an octave. So it's the exact same note. It's just a B flat. Okay, so you can add it there. So now, if you put those flat five notes into the E minor pentatonic scale, you get this. I'm adding another note. Let me do that again. Gravy, J. Gravy, Davy. Okay, so that's with the flat five. I was also adding another note in there, which I'll get to in but a second. But um, that's with the flat five. So that's your minor pentatonic now with just a flat five note. <laughs> And, that, and that's very kind of bluesy, kind of, um, you know, that kind of thing. But with using the flat five, is you, you kind of want to use the flat five as just a passing note. No, it's, it's not something you want to kind of stick on. If, you, if you've got a song kind of a 12 bar, you know, doing something like that, you don't want this note in there all the time because it sounds horrific. It sounds like Nine Inch Nails does blues, you know, it's, it's, it sounds, it sounds grim, but if you do it in the kind of like a, a kind of a passing way, you know, like that, it sounds great, and also you can kind of do, um, kind of, if you use the lower one, you can kind of do run out. you know, so, you, so the flat five is really, really cool for use in a, in a passing way, but it's not a note you really want to be sticking on. But it's cool to know it's there for when you want that kind of weird kind of um, tension, really. It's... You know, you can really create a lot of tension with the flat five. So it's important to know it's there, but just be aware it's not the nicest of notes to use at any given moment. You can't just kind of, like the rest of a minor pentatonic scale we used then, the flat five is a very sparing note. You've got to be very careful when you use it and when you don't use it. Okay, so now we have uh, more notes we can add. We have two more notes we can add, and it's that one uh, and that one. Okay, so these... I, it's really strange. I've never heard this been mentioned anywhere, but I, I don't know. It must have been mentioned somewhere. I don't know. At the bottom of a minor pentatonic scale, right? So the, from the G string to the high E string, is the G major scale. And the G major scale is E minor's relative major. Okay? So G major goes hand in hand with E minor because G major is its relative major and to um, to E minor and 
G major is relative may uh, no sorry E minor is relative minor to G major. That probably didn't make any sense, but I hope it did. If it didn't, I will get to it a bit more in a bit. But like I say, you've got um, because they're, they're kind of relative major minor, they work, and because of that, at the bottom of the E minor pentatonic scale, you have a G major scale. You know, in its bare bones, is this. <laughs> You can hear it sounds, you know, happy. But if you add these extra two notes in, which are the first fret on the B string, and then the second fret on the high E, you get a full major scale. So you can hear there, that's a full major scale now. So, and those two notes will work in a blues, or any, or, or any progression in the E minor, because it's a G major, which means, you know, and it'll work because it's a relative major to E minor. And the same way as in, like, you know, if you're playing, like, a chord progression that it starts with a G major, you know, you can use E minor over it because it's, it's relative minor. Sorry, I have, an, I have an itchy arm there. So now the whole thing together with those extra added notes there, you get this scale, which is, like, a basically like a super scale. This is, like, the only scale, like, really... You can you can do so much with this scale; it's ridiculous. So um, starts as usual with the E minor pentatonic. So you get your open E, and then your second, uh, third fret on the open E, and then add in uh, A, open A, and then add in your flat five, and then go to the second fret there, and then open D, sec uh, second fret D, open G, second fret G, third fret G, again to the other flat five. Open B, first fret B, third fret B, open high E, uh, second fret high E, and then finishing up on the third fret high E. I'm getting a lot of ground hum today. I think I'm, I'm too close to the amp. But uh, so the whole thing together, really, really well, kind of, you know, played kind of like a, a, a speed ish, if you will, not not Ingve Malmsteen speed, but is this. A lot of notes there, yeah, and that's just one scale. But again, be wary of that that B flat, that flat five. Always be aware of it. You can use it, but only in certain places. And it's up to you to find out where you like to hear it and where you don't like to hear it. Because some people might actually like that. You know, it is. It, it's it's hurt by um. You know, it's, it's a different key, but it's hurt by uh, nine inch nails. You know, it's in A minor, but you know, but you get the idea. It, it it creates a tension, so you know you might actually really like it. You know, you can get both in. You know, and uh, there's quite a lot of songs throughout history that have used the flat five to great effect. Black Sabbath by Black Sabbath, Purple Haze by Jimi Hendrix, like I say, uh, Hurt by Nine Inch Nails. So many bands and songs have a flat five in there. So many blues songs. You know, so many blues little runs and songs have the flat five in there just to add a certain kind of... Well, it's called the blue note because it's got a bluesy sound to it, but it's very dissonant. It's a flat five. It was actually outlawed at some point in history, but that's another lesson altogether. Um, but yeah, okay, so the whole scale altogether, Tangent Boys in effect, everybody, uh, is this. Really, really slow. I'll do it with one finger. So, open E to start. Third fret. Open A. So first fret o uh, A. Okay. So, and then descending... weird that flat five sounds but it is a cool note to know it's there if you want it it's nice to know it's there even if you don't use it all the time which i would definitely recommend you don't use it all the time because it can sound absolutely horrific sometimes so especially you know it, it sounds a bit grim but 
it's cool to know it's there and it's really important to know it's there. Right, another note you can use in an E minor pentatonic scale is your F sharp. So you can add that one in as well. Oh, sorry. You know, and it adds like a little semitone run down to the E. It, it, it's basically hallelujah. So you can use that, and that sounds really nice if you kind of, again, if you're creating kind of a tension kind of thing, you can use that kind of thing. So it really holds. And then resolve. Okay, so that's the first position. So you've got your minor pentatonic, you got your minor pentatonic with the blue note, the flat five. You've got your minor pentatonic now with a G major scale at the bottom half of it. And you've also got your F sharp note there, which adds like a little, again, like the flat five, like a tension builder. So that's what we've got there. So let's move on now to G major scale. So G major pentatonic is this shape. And if you go, if you listen really closely, if you do a full G major, well, if you play these G, ma G ma uh, major pentatonic, it's here. You know, so it's the same scale. Just in a different octave. Okay, so enough on that for the time being. Let me show you the scale. So you start off on your second, fr uh, third fret, sorry, low E, G note. And then you go to your fifth fret on the low E. And then you go down to your A string on the second fret. A string, fifth fret. And then you go down to your D string, second fret. D string, fifth fret. G string, second fret. G string, fourth fret. B string third, B string fifth, high E string third, and finishing up on the high E string on the fifth. So the whole thing is this. So starting off on the third fret, the G note on the low E. Down to the A. Down to the D. So that's G major pentatonic scale there. Okay, so just just to do it, uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure, uh, hopefully you'll be able, hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. I'm really worried that you can't see what I'm doing, but hopefully you can. So it's this. And then descending. But you can also resolve it to an E minor. And it changes the feel of the whole thing altogether. Okay, so that's your G major pentatonic scale in its entirety, bottom to top. Mixing that now with your E minor, so your E minor scale. Here they go seamlessly into one another, and when you know both of these, you can start to kind of like cross them. So you can start off with your G minor pentatonic and going into your E minor, and then finish up on the G major. So you can start to mess with both of them to get... I really hope this is making sense. I'm terrified. This video is actually quite terrifying. I didn't realise how scared I am of it, actually. But um, hopefully you can kind of see what I mean there. From that E minor, with all those extra added notes and just the G major scale on the bottom end of it, you can then like add this G uh, major scale, pentatonic scale, in, to add more positions. So, say, so now you can move. So instead of just being stuck there you now can move all about the place and you can kind of you know 
right, so you can start to move about a little bit more. So now, instead of just being kind of trapped between the first and the, uh, sorry, open string and the third fret, you're now you're now unlocked the guitar neck from all the open strings, which you can play all of them in E minor. So all the open strings will work in E minor to your fifth fret. So basically, you've unlocked that much of a guitar neck now. So you now you know this much, okay? So you know your E minor pentatonic uh, in your first position, which is basically on that kind of shape. And then you know your G major pentatonic, which is kind of technically right butted up against it like a puzzle piece in this position. Hopefully, you know, if you know what I mean. So now, extra added notes in G major, you can do this. So you can add now four major scales. So starting as usual with third to fifth on low E. And when you go down to your second fret on your A, go to your third fret A. And then go to your fifth fret A, down to your D string on the second fret, then D string fourth fret, and then finishing up on the fifth fret on the high on the on the D. Same scales down here. there Dave but uh, hopefully you can see what I'm being there so now we've got these notes to add in to something in E minor or G major so if your keys in E minor or G major you can use any of these scales you can use both these scales together to create a solo or a riff even so you can kind of get if your if your E is your root you can go G, you can do the exact same thing. So G major. So we've unlocked the guitar neck to the fifth fret. So we know the notes we can use from the open strings, all the open strings, to the fifth fret now. And I know some of you might have seen it already, but there are octaves. So it's exactly the same note. So for instance, you've got a low E is your E, you've got an E there, and you've also got an E there, and you've got an E here. You know, and you've got, you got, you got E's everywhere, but let's not, I don't want to get focused on where the octave notes are. You know, it's not about that. This, the, I just want, I just, I, I need to show you the, the shapes and the scales and how to navigate the neck, and then you can start to figure out, and then we can talk about octave notes. So, that's, I'm not going to talk about that right now. Okay, it's because it just gets a bit confusing. I say you've got an E, an E, an E, an E. Excuse me. They're all over the place, you know. So, and, the, and then same thing with a G. You got a G there, you got a G there, you got a G there, you got a G there. You know, we can get to that in another video. At this point in time, this is all about learning these shapes with these added notes to unlock the guitar neck. Uh, knowledge of where the notes are can come later, but in all fairness, is not 100% important. Like, it is important, but it's not. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying it's not important. It, at this point in time, what we're trying to learn, what we're trying to do by unlocking the guitar neck, it can kind of like take a little bit of a backseat for the time being. We just need to get these scales down under our fingers, and then we can start figuring out what the notes are and why and whatever. So, so the whole thing so far is this. <laughs> happens when you don't look okay so let me just refer to my notes and make sure I'm, I'm going in the right way here okay so that's what we got there and you know in all fairness in the G major scale you could actually add the flat five as well it sounds weird So that's the G major pentatonic scale with these extra added notes of a G major scale and also the flat five in there as well, which you don't, again, be careful of a flat five. Always be wary of a flat five. It's a, it can be a nasty sound. Okay, okay, say, so, okay. I can't even talk. Good gravy, everybody. This video has got me jittery. Okay, so moving on now.
to the next position, okay? So the next position is going to have a few more things in it. Its basic shape is this. So this is the... This is ten... Right. This is where things get a bit silly with minor pen, with, with one pentatonic scales. I would always class, and I'm going to do that today, the minor pentatonic scale is your first position, okay? Your major pentatonic is your second position. This is the third position. Because guitarists don't work in a major way, if that makes any sense. We go for minor first. So e, working out of E minor or a, ma a minor key will make a lot more sense. I, I, I promise. I promise you it'll make more sense. So uh, next position, third position, everybody. Sorry about that. The camera had a bit of a, uh, well, my memory card is, it, it doesn't really like my memory card, so it turns itself off sometimes. Okay, so enough on that. Back to this. So third position now. I say, I call it, People throughout the world will probably call it the second position. I'm going to call it the third because it makes more sense from a guitarist standpoint to start on a minor than it does a major. Okay, so um, so yeah, third position now. So fifth fret low E, seventh fret low E, and then we got the fifth fret on the A, seventh fret A, fifth fret uh, D, um, seventh fret D. And then we go down to the fourth fret G. 7th fret G, and then we go to the B string on the 5th fret, B string 8th, high E string 5th, and then high E string on the 7th. And then descending is... Okay, so one more time, I'll do it really slow. I'll, 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 do it with one finger, Dave, it'll be easier. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing as well. So, one more time, really slow. Okay, so that's the next position. And for this point in time, I'm going to stop with the added notes. And I'm going to move on to position four now. Okay, so that's your next position. So now we technically know, well, technically know up to the seventh fret. So we've gone from our first position, first position knowing that much of the fretboard. Now, then we know our major scale, G major scale, gives us that much of a fretboard. Now adding this one gives us technically, technically to be eighth, but we'll just call it seventh for the sake of argument. Now we know this much, okay? So we're just gradually increasing our knowledge of the neck. So the whole thing so far, coming from E minor pentatonic with the open E string start is this. G major. Position three. And then you can run down them. So now we've got three positions under our fingers, so to say. So now we know to the seventh fret on the guitar, okay? So we know that. So moving on to position four now. Um, and position four is really, really cool. Okay, so. Yeah, just making sure I'm in the right place, everybody. I don't want to be shortchanging you here. Okay, so position four is going to start on the seventh fret on the low E. Go to the 10th fret low E, go down to the 7th fret A, 10th fret A, 7th fret D, 9th fret D, G string 7th fret, G string 9th fret, B string 8th uh, fret, B string 10, high E string 9, uh, so 7 sorry, and then high E string 10. So the whole thing really slow, one thing is this.
and then descending. So that's for, uh, fourth position now, okay? So now we can run all of them together. So now we know up to the 10th fret. So now we've got this much of a neck to play with and we're pretty much done. We've only got two more frets to learn what, how to use them scale-wise and we've got the whole neck. Because once you get to the 12th fret, if you know all the positions on this side of, an, of the 12th fret, you know all of them down this side as well. The guitar is just a mirror image once you get to the 12th fret. Okay, so the whole thing, I'll, I'll kind of rock it through because I, I, I don't want to, don't want to take too time just running through them. But um, the whole thing is this. E minor pentatonic with the extra added note, G major. Finger dead skin got in the way there. Third position. Fourth position. Okay. So moving on to the fifth position now. The fifth and final position is this. So, so like I say, we've got this, this much of a neck to play with now. So you can kind of start to piece these scales together. So you can start to go. You know what I mean? You, you start to be able to just uh, stretch your finger, stretch your fingers. So you start to be able to kind of like move up and down the neck instead of up and down the neck, if you know what I mean. Like you're playing a cross instead of up and down. Okay, so fifth and final position starts off on the tenth fret on the low E. So tenth fret low E, twelfth fret low E, tenth fret on the A, twelfth fret A, uh, ninth fret D, twelfth fret D, ninth fret G, twelfth fret G, and then we go down to the B string, tenth fret. B string 12, high E string 10, and high E string 12. So the whole shape is this. Okay, so now we play every single note on the 12th fret because it's the same as all the open strings. So. So we've reached basically the nut again, if you know what I mean. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but yeah, we've reached the nut again. So. Okay, so that's position five. That's the final position. That's the, the final position you'll need to know of a minor, of a, of of, of a pentatonic scales. So all together now. So now we've got that much of a neck to work with. We've got all the way to the twelfth fret. And I say once you reach the twelfth fret, you just start again. So you know you know this side. Learning this side guarantees you know this side because it's just a mirror image. You know that you just think of the twelfth fret as your nut. You know. So basically, like you know, or. or you know, if you were to put a capo on your 12th fret, you would have an open string, and then your technically your 15th fret is your third fret. Hopefully, that makes sense. I really, I really hope that makes sense. Okay, so the whole thing together, uh, from minor pentatonic E minor here to your fifth position down here, back to your E minor pentatonic, is this with the extra adding notes. major position 
free. Position four. Okay, so there you go. That's the five position of a minor pentatonic scale. So now, what are they after the twelfth fret? Well, they're exactly the same. So the minor, coming back to your E minor pentatonic scale now, does this. So it starts on the twelfth fret low E. Then you can extra put your extra F sharp added note in on the fourteenth fret. So twelfth fret low E. Uh, 14th fret low E, 15th fret low E, and then go down to your A string on the 12th fret, 13, uh, 14, uh, yeah, 13, I can't count, 13th fret A, 14th fret A, that's your flat 5 there, uh, on your, uh, on your 13th, and then you go down to your D string on the, uh, 12th fret, D string, uh, 14th, G string, 12th, G string uh, 14, G string 15 for the flat 5 again, the blue note, 12th fret now on the B string, 13th fret B string, 15th fret B string, down to the high E string on the 12th, 14th fret uh, high E, and 15th fret high E. Okay, so the whole thing is this. It's exactly the same scales up here. But it's just on the next octave basically above. So, well, it's not the next octave, but it doesn't matter about that. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to do it the way I, I see it, so, with, with the guitar. Excuse me. Okay, so, that's your E minor pentatonic scale. Right, now, here's your homework. Learn the rest yourself, because I could show you it, but, 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 you already know it. That's the key. You know, you know your E minor pentatonic scale is here now, on the 12th fret, okay? So, taking the 12th fret as your nut now, so technically you've gone like that, you've broken the guitar neck, you've pushed it up to a 12th fret. So now the 12th fret is your nut, okay? So all the 12th fret notes are, fretted, are now all your open strings, which is what they are anyway, the same notes. But there. Um, now, after that minor pentatonic, learn your G major scale. And after the G major, learn position three, and then learn position four. And I, you won't get, unless you've got a 24th fret guitar, you won't get to position five. You know, unless you've got, like I say, unless you've got a 24th fret guitar, in which case you can get to position five. But... I'm not going to show you the rest past the 12th fret because I'm evil. Because um, I want you to do it. Because you already do it. You already know it. If you know it here, you know it here. It's just exactly the same shapes. The shapes will never change. No matter where you are. Okay? So, that's your five positions of pentatonic scale. That's what you need to know, basically. Okay, so, now, let's add some extra notes to make this a little bit more interesting. Okay, These, these are the notes that I use quite a lot and I'll understand that some of them are octaves of the same note some of them may even be modal I don't know um so I, I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna think I'm not gonna think about that because I, I don't bog my brain down with that kind of thing okay so let's put in these extra added notes okay so we can do things like this so starting off on position five if we put some extra added notes in we'll be able to do runs like this <laughs> So it's just a little bit more interesting. There's a little bit more melodic value in there because you've got a few more little um, notes to play with. Okay, so E minor and G major, that's all there is. Okay, so the shapes I've taught you for E minor and G major, that's all there is. But we can now add in extra notes in position uh, three, four, and five. 
Okay, so let's start with position 5 to start with down here at the 12th fret, okay? So, 12th fret, we can, um, well, you know, your bottom, uh, your high E and your B strings, you can't add any. Those two notes need to stay the same. You can't, you don't really want to add the chromatic line in, it won't sound very nice, okay? So your, so your, uh, I'm actually doing this wrong around, huh? I should start at the top. Well, actually, sorry. <sighs> Take a breath. Your E and A in position 5... E and A, B and E will stay exactly the same. Okay, so they'll just stay 10th and 12th on each string. So, like that. They will not change. You can't, there's no other notes you can add to that at this point in time, okay? So they're just tones. They're not semitones, they're not that kind of thing. So we won't be focusing in the fifth position on the D and the G strings, okay? So we can add in the 11th fret on the G. And we can also add in the 10th fret on the D. Okay? So all of a sudden this scale becomes this. So now you've got two extra added notes here. So 10th fret on the, D, on, the, on the D and 11th fret on the G. And the eagle-eyed among you will spot that this is G major scale again. So you're just playing the G major scale again. So same as down here. Same as here. Same as here. Okay? And the same as here. Okay? So, I hope this is making sense. It, it, music, musical theory and scales are an absolute rabbit hole. You've got to be so careful when you're teaching them because you can just destroy... It can get confusing. You, you can destroy logic. It just goes away. Okay, so now that's position five. So we've got extra added notes in position five there that we can now use to create a really nice run in position five. Okay, so let's go to position four. Okay, so what have we got in position four? Uh, where are we? Yes, so position four, we can add in, position four being this. That's position four, right? Okay, so we can add in now, we can add in the sixth fret, uh, sorry, the eighth fret, sorry. I, do, uh, I can't count everybody, I'm, I'm very, very enumerate. Um, we can we can add in the eighth fret on the um, the high E. Okay, so we can go D uh, D. Okay, so instead of just we now have this eighth fret now on the high E. So, right, okay, this is going to get, I hope this isn't going to get too confusing. But now also, we can also add in this note here, the ninth fret on the A. Okay, so we can do that. If you wanted to, you could also add the flat five, <laughs> the flat five there. But that's, that's no, no, stop it, Dave. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Flat five needs to go away now, tucked away in a box, and it's in the corner. Okay, so now we've got this. Okay, we can also add in this C note. Okay, so we can add in the uh, eighth fret on the low E. And again, that's just the bottom half of the G major scale there. Good gravy, they're everywhere. Okay, so, and you also get the E minor pentatonic as well. Okay, so that's another note we can add in position four. Okay, so position three. 
What can we do in position three? What notes can we add in position three? Position three, we can do this. Okay, so uh, starting off on the seventh fret on the high E to the fifth fret high E, uh, eighth fret B, fi uh, seventh fret B, then you go to the fifth fret on your B, and then you go to your seventh fret um, G, <laughs> fifth fret G, down to your fourth fret G, then D string seven, D string five, D string four. And then uh, A string uh, fifth and A string uh, uh, sorry A string seven A string fifth I hit a low E string seven and then low E string uh, fifth. Okay, so that whole thing is this. Okay, so now these are pretty much all the extra added notes we can add. Okay. Now we've got to piece them together, okay? So this is where this is where time comes in. This takes a lot of time to get for your brain to piece it together, so to say. But you can start to create shapes, um, uh, like you know, they're, they're slightly different to just your minor pentatonic. I've got, um, you know what? I'm terrified. This isn't making sense. I am so nervous about this video. Okay, so. Your E minor pentatonic again. G major. And then we got position uh, three with the extra added notes. Oh. Position four of extra added notes. That was wrong. But then position five of extra added notes. Okay, we now have all the notes we can use in the key of G major or E minor, okay? That's all the notes we can use, well that's all the notes that kind of like I use if I'm playing solo and that's all the notes I've ever found that people like, you know, my heroes like Jimi Hendrix and John Fashanti and, and Peter Green and, you know, uh, Rory Gallagher used. You know, there is occasions where they use chromatics, but not very often. These are literally all the, the the shapes they do. Okay, so, yeah, okay, so, I just had to turn the camera off and I did the thing. You're going to notice overlapping, okay? I'm sure some of you already have noticed overlapping. Scales overlap when you add notes into them. So, position five will over, overlap into position four. Position four will overlap into position three. Position three will overlap into position uh, two. Uh, position two will overlap into position one. And that's how you transition between them. Because you've got these overlapping notes. So if you're at position 5 here, you're all of a sudden at the back end of position 4. And then you go, you go to position 3, position 2, position 1, and you're finished. Okay? So you start to get these shapes. And I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to show you on the diagram in a minute. It'll make more sense on there than it will me showing you it. But. These are all the shapes you can use. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the, sh the scales one more time with the extra added notes, okay? And I promise you, this is, you know, th this is all I know. This is all I know. This is uh, playing guitar. I promise. This is all I know. I don't know any more. It's like scales because I love these. The, the, the minor pentatonics with the extra added notes, but whatever they are, I don't, I don't, I don't really care if I'm modal or they're not. I just know they work. And that's all that matters to me. Is that I, I'm, I'm not one for no, one trying to understand why they work. I just I just care about they do work, if that makes any sense. But um, and I'll show you on the diagram. It'll make more sense on there. Um, but yeah, you can start to see these overlapping scales, and when they overlap, you can transition between them. Okay, so let's go really slow through every scale, every added note, and you know, then hopefully you can kind of start to piece them together in your own mind because you won't see it the way I see it. I'll see it in a different way totally, and I'll show you the way I'll see it when I get to the little diagram in a minute. Okay, so without further ado, shut up talking, Dave. Get on with it. Okay, so starting with E minor pentatonic scale, and I will get to E minor on the 12th fret, and I will not go any further because that's your work. Okay, so here we go. Always be aware of 
that flat five, remember? G major now, position two. with the added note of that one there coming out of the G major scale and also that one there and also that one there okay position uh, four yes position four position four yes position four good gravy Davy. okay so this is going to start on the seventh fret Extra added notes, the extra added notes being here on the 8th fret on the high E and uh, here on the 9th fret on the A. Okay, and also here on the 8th fret on the low E. So, interesting it all. Okay, and then that finally position 5 with extra added notes. Sorry, one finger. And then you come back to your E minor pentatonic scale, which is with the added notes. Okay, so when you start to get these uh, in your head, these shapes in your head with these extra added notes, uh, you start to be able to create runs. <laughs> Nothing I did then that I haven't shown you. It's just a case of getting them under your fingers to know where the notes are and creating a flow. You can, and then another way of doing it is starting to learn it across the thing. So kind of doing exercises like. <laughs> Stuff like that, and hopefully you'll be able to see what I what I did there. It's quite simple. I'm just doing it on the B string and just doing runs up. G. B. High E. Okay, so I'm just making runs up now, and it's just stuff like that. And that's what you want to be doing. You want to be messing around with stuff like that to uh, give you a better understanding of where the notes are. And I promise you, every note will work over E. And G. Um, can I do a D? Can I do a G? You know, so you know, it's a bit, a bit of a weird thing. I can't really do, can't do, show you really very well with the G. But hopefully, you know what I mean. Okay, so uh, I really hope this video is informative. If it's not informative, I really am. I am so sorry. Um, I'm terrified actually. I'm really, really worried that this video isn't good enough. Um, okay, so position one. E minor pentatonic scale with extra added notes and a G major scale on the G, B, and high E strings. Okay? Position two, G major pentatonic scale with extra added notes there. Okay? Position three with extra added notes is there. Position four, and then position five with extra added notes is here. 
And like I say, those extra notes, I'll show you more in the diagram in but a sec. But like I say, and then when you get to your 12th fret, you just start again. It's just a mirror image. It's basically like I say, you've broken the guitar, <laughs> break down. And now your 12th fret is your nut. So your 12th fret now is your open string. So everything you fret on the 12th fret, everything that comes after it is exactly the same. So you... You know, so you know what I mean? I gave it away there, but hopefully it was... Um, but I want to leave that to you really more than anything, even though I just showed it. But, uh, you know, it's up to you to kind of figure it out because then the light will come in. Someone will open the door, so to say. Okay, so... Um, so yeah, let me let me revert to this little diagram now, and I'll show you um, more little runs and all this over adding notes. So hopefully, it might make, make a little bit more sense as well. Okay, so let's go to let's revert to the diagram now. Let's put the guitar down. Let's go to that. Okay, so this is my little diagram of the guitar neck. This is basically everything I've just shown you on the guitar neck is here. Okay, so the blue scale is the minor pentatonic with the extra added notes. So these two here are the extra notes basically making up a G major scale, okay? So from your open G string to your first fret on your B string to your uh, second fret on the, on the high E string there. That's your minor pentatonic scale with extra notes. There's the flat fives, okay? Flat fives of a cross room because they're a bit weird and you've got to be aware of them. Okay, so that's minor pentatonic. That's your major pentatonic. Position three, four, and five, back to position one. And you'll see the colours just repeat. So it's exactly the same. There is no difference whatsoever. You know what I mean? All the notes are there. All the shapes are there. It's very much the same. But we've got the extra added notes now, okay? And hopefully, and I say what I'll do, I'll get the pen out, pen out of the way, you'll be able to just pause this video and get this. And I'm going to have to try and make this available, actually. I'm going to have to like, scan it in or something and make this available so you can actually kind of like download it so you can see it. But you can see all the extra added notes in the shapes, okay? So each, actually, I think in all fairness, I think this was a lot easier showing it like this than it is on guitar. Um, it's a bit more obvious. So in your major scale, pentatonic here, your G major pentatonic, you've got that note there and that note there added, okay? So in position, uh, sorry, let's start position one. Position one, you've got that one there and that one there and also the flat five, okay? Position two, you've got that one, that one, and the flat five, okay? Position three, you've got that note added and that note added. Position four, you have that note added and that note added and that note added. Position five, you have that one and that one added. And then you get back to position one again, which is your minor pentatonic with the flat five and the G major scale there, okay? And then you just go back again. G major, position three, position four, position five. Okay, okay. So now if you pause this, you start to see little runs on the guitar neck, on each string. And those runs I was doing just a minute ago um, are here. So the one on the D string, if I start on the second fret on the G string, it goes da 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 all the way up to the 12th fret. Then you get the G string run, and then you get the B string run, and then you get the high E string run, okay? So all these notes that you see here, all the way up to the 12th fret, which is there, will all work in G major uh, G major or E minor. Mainly E minor we want to focus on because we're guitarists and like I say, we work better in minor than we do major, okay? So, like I say, pause this to your heart's content and just look and, trans like you know, go through these scales on your guitar and then you'll start to see it become a puzzle. You can see all the shapes butt up against each other all of them have notes that will intersect, you know, or, or intertwine, sorry, even. And they'll all start to kind of like, you know, bunch up and make a whole thing. So you'll totally unlock the guitar neck. You know, you've unlocked it. You know, every note in E minor, okay? So, you, you know, it, it's as simple as that. You know, every note you can use in E minor or G major, all that will work. Every note will work. Some might sound a little weird, but that's up for you to discuss. That's, that, that's personal preference. What some someone might find weird, somebody might love. Like the flat five, for instance. That sounds, you know, it can sound horrific, but put into a song like Hurt by Nine Inch Nails sounds absolutely amazing. You know, and Purple Haze by Jimi Hendrix sounds absolutely amazing. So, be that for what it is. But hopefully, you know, 
like I say, and and you hope you'll be able to kind of start to see how the guitar neck is constructed in E minor. Okay, so it's quite simple, really, but it's not. It's simple, but it's not. It it's it's simple confusion, if that makes any sense. It's simple hard. It's very um, it's hard simple. I don't know. I don't, know, I don't even word that anymore. But hopefully you know what I mean. It's very very strange, but it's very very you know that's it. This is all I use to play guitar. This is all I've ever found people like Jimi Hendrix and John Frusciante and Peter Green and, and Rory Gallagher to use when they play the guitar. It's just these scales with these added notes. They're probably modal. I'm not that bothered. All I know is they work and I love the sound of these. So you can start to get runs like here. Dirt, 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 That's really annoying, Dave. Don't do that again. Um... But you see what I mean? You start to get these runs. And you'll start to see these runs in guitar players like Ingve Malmsteen. This run here, that one there that I just showed you, Malmsteen uses that a lot. You see it in his playing a lot. Jimi Hendrix mainly sticks to that shape and that shape. John Fashanti will play up and down the neck. Okay? Uh, Rory Gallagher will play up and down throughout as well. And the same... Um, of quite a lot of guitarists. Peter Green will use the blue scale only, pretty much, and when it starts, you know, in, in, in different positions. You know, he mainly just uses minor pentatonics. He doesn't really use a great deal of, kind of like, the rest of the thing, kind of, so I'd say. Very, very interesting. Uh, when you see this, you can start to pick apart, pick apart your favourite guitar solos, and you'll notice they all live in here somewhere. Even with bends. So, that note to that note, is a half step bend, so like a really kind of like really lovely, really you no know, melodic bend. That note to that note is the classic rock bend. Okay, so that's the tone. That note there to that note there is the Angus Young bend. A lot of Angus Young solos start with that note to that note there. Okay. Okay, so and that's it. Like I say, you can pause this uh, bit of the video to your heart's content and just like you know get these scales under your fingers, and you'll start to miss the borders. If you know what I mean, the borders will start to dis disintegrate, and you'll see the whole thing as a w as one thing, instead of just like uh, five individual scales, one, two, three, four, five. You'll start to see them as a whole, and when you start to see the guitar neck as a whole thing, and you don't you don't see it as a scale, you know you start to be able to just kind of like unconsciously play whatever you want, you know, and you start to create melodic phrases because you're not seeing them as scales. They're just another way of getting music across, so to say. Okay, so let's talk quickly because I'm running out of time. This video has already been dead longer than I thought. Um, let's talk about changing key, okay? So at this point in time, you've learned this, right? So you can use this scale in E minor and G major, right? Okay, so we covered that. So now, what happens if you want to go to a different key? Say, uh, I think the only one I've got is D, ma D minor, okay? Say the song, say somebody says, oh, the next song's in D minor at a jam session, right? Okay, so what, so what, you know, so you need to figure out D minor, okay? So, bringing D minor in. Now, if you go from your root note, if you learn all the notes on your low E string and A string, okay? So you know every note on the E, uh, the E string, which is E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, B flat, B, um, C, C sharp, D, E flat E, okay, back to E. If you know all the notes on your low E string, you'll know where to start. If somebody says this song's in D minor, then you find it's on the tenth fret on your low E, and you know you've got your minor pentatonic shape with your extra added notes, which is your F major scale here in this case, but we'll not talk about that. You know now, you know where your minor pentatonic lies, okay? So from that scale, you can then navigate down and up the neck, okay? So this going towards the first fret, going down to the 22nd, okay? So you can start a solo. If somebody says go for a solo, you can start by playing this note, that note, that note, that note, that note, that one there, whichever one of these. And then in your mind's eye, and eventually by feel, you'll be able to go, right, I know exactly where the notes are in the next shape on from my minor pentatonic. So you know, for instance, like from your minor pentatonic, going into position two, you can use that note, that one, that one, and that one, that one, 
that one and that one okay so you can start here and then go over here and then you can also go backwards if you know if you want to go down Rory Gallagher is a great example of this Rory would descend a lot so if you're starting to bad penny you can start going down so you can go from a G string on your on your 10th fret which is basically your nut now you can now go down to your ninth fret to your seventh fret to your fifth fret okay and then you can create little scales this that that one there that one there that one there those shapes there are very much rory okay and in your mind's eye like i say you'll start to see all these notes and eventually they'll become so set in stone with you you won't have to worry about it you'll just be able to play by feel alone because you'll know exactly where you are you'll be able to close your eyes and just know where you are on the neck instinctively. Okay, so just just to recap, taking D minor away, somebody says that it's in E minor, you know where your E minor pentatonic shape is. The shapes do not change. You'll notice that the shapes are exactly the same. From D minor to E, they're exactly the same shapes. The shapes never change. The extra added notes never change. All that changes is their position on the fretboard to coincide with um, the key. Okay, so I hope that made sense. I don't know if that made sense. I really hope that made sense. If it didn't, I do apologise. I will hand out phone bats and you can beat me. But like I said, not the face, man. Anyway, um, but yeah, so I hope you know what I mean. Like, and like I say, if I just hold that down there, uh, you can see they're exactly the same. The shapes are exactly the same. The colours, I've called them in exactly the same to show you they're exactly the same. Okay, so let's just move back out of the way. And that's D minor. So go back to E minor. Pause this to your heart's content. Get all these scales with the extra notes under your fingers. Play along to a backing track in E minor or G major. G major is harder. I just recommend going for E minor at this point in time. And just go with it, okay? And just learn all this. Like I say, and that's it up to the 22nd fret. Which I said I wasn't going to give away, but I have given away. But oh well. All's well. Anyway. um, But yeah, that is, you know, you've got to learn it. You've got to learn every conceivable thing. And then like I say, once you learn it, the border lines of each scale start to disappear. And when they start to disappear, you, you get a grasp on the guitar. You unlocked the guitar. It will do what you want at that point at home. Okay? So I really hope this video made sense, everybody. If it didn't, I really do apologize. I hope you know. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's been informative. And I will see you again very soon for another one. Like I say, pause this to your heart's content. Pause the D minor to your heart's content. Find a backing track and just solo. Go nuts. And I'll see you again very soon for another video. Thank you very much indeed. I'll see you again. My brain's fried. And I hope yours is too. <laughs> see you again. Goodbye now. Thank you very much.